Let me tell you an inspiring story that will make you believe in the power of determination and hard work. Back in 1920, an 11-year-old boy had a passion for selling. He loved it so much that he decided to drop out of school just to pursue it. He began his entrepreneurial journey by building a stand to sell Pepsi and started earning his own money at such a young age. As he grew up, he became an outstanding salesman and landed a job in a large company. But when the Great Depression hit, he was laid off and life became difficult. With no job in sight, he started selling potato chips from his car to make ends meet. He would sell them anywhere he could, from gas stations to hospitals, tirelessly every day. At that time, chips could only be sold locally, and they would go stale in no time, as they were packed in paper bags. But this young boy had a brilliant business mind, and he found a solution that would revolutionize the chip industry forever. He discovered a way to keep chips fresh for longer, and that's when Lay's, the chips that we all know and love today, were born. This young boy's name was Herman Lay, and he went from selling chips out of his car to selling chips all over the world. His story teaches us that with hard work, determination, and a brilliant idea, anyone can achieve success, even in the toughest times. Herman Lay was a young man with an entrepreneurial spirit from a young age. Born in 1909 in Charlotte, North Carolina, he started his first business when he was only 11 years old by selling Pepsi Cola from a homemade stand in his family's front yard. Despite charging only five cents per bottle, Compared to the baseball park's 10 cents across the street, Herman's stand was so successful that he hired other kids to work for him while he delivered newspapers. After graduating from high school, Herman attended Furman University on an athletic scholarship. But after two years, he decided to drop out to work instead. He and a friend invested $1.100 each to sell ice cream along a parade route. But unfortunately, the route changed at the last minute, and they were left with nothing but melting ice cream. Herman then worked a number of odd jobs before finally snagging a salesman position for the Sunshine Biscuit Company, one of the biggest cookie makers in the U.S. at the time. Unfortunately, his time at Sunshine Biscuit was cut short when the Great Depression hit, and he was laid off. Desperate to find a new job, Herman searched through newspaper ads for work and wrote to hundreds of employers. After his 200th letter, he finally received an offer, but it was just a position as a truck driver for the Barrett Snack Food Company at the time. The salty snack business barely existed, and companies like Barrett offered few products like potato chips and were struggling to make sales. Herman wasn't initially excited about the offer and hesitated to accept it. By the time he did, it was too late, and the position was filled. Fortunately, Barrett offered him a position as an extra salesman instead. And from his car, Herman would sell potato chips to grocery stores, road stands, gas stations, and anywhere else he could think of. Later that year, Herman managed to borrow $100 to start his own distribution company and take over a small warehouse. He finally got his first step up in the business. He also continued to work with Barrett and was given his own territory. Herman spent all day selling potato chips, slept in whatever town he ended up in, and then started over again the next morning. His new sense of freedom pushed him to work hard. By the end of the year, his company managed to expand its territory and increase profits. And just three years later, it was able to hire over 30 employees and produce its own snack foods. Herman Lay's hard work, persistence, and dedication to his craft would eventually lead him to create Lay's, one of the most popular snack food companies in the world. But it all started with his determination to make a living selling potato chips out of his car. Herman had worked tirelessly to build his business and finally saw the fruits of his labor pay off. However, a tragic event brought a sudden halt to his success when Barrett's founder passed away, and the founder's family decided to sell off the company. With a stroke of luck, the family offered to sell the business to Herman for $60,000. The only problem was that the amount was 12 times more than Herman's life savings. Desperate not to pass up a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, Herman reached out to dozens of people for help, but had no luck. Eventually, he took a huge risk and borrowed $30,000 from the bank. He then convinced Barrett to accept the amount he had and take the rest in stock. Herman renamed the company H.W. Lay and set his sights on paying off his debt. Herman realized that the key to success was selling potato chips nationally, 
but it had yet to be done by any company due to the difficulty in preserving and shipping potato chips. At the time, potato chips were simply dipped out of a barrel, placed in paper bags and sealed with paper clips, making them prone to becoming soggy, stale, or spoiled. Herman researched advanced solutions to preserve and ship potato chips and discovered a technology used to preserve photographs and stamps called glassine. He leveraged this technology to create a special bag and seal that was resistant to moisture, dust, and grease, keeping potato chips fresh longer. Later, he developed a machine to automate the process of packaging multiple potato chip bags at once. To succeed in selling potato chips nationally, Herman and his team traveled to different regions and observed dozens of convenience stores, grocery stores, and supermarkets. The goal was to come up with a strategy to take over half of their customers within a week. By the end of the year, L.A. Wise was selling its potato chips in 10 states, from Florida to Wisconsin. Their aggressive business approach paid off. However, Herman's success was short-lived when America entered the Second World War, and L.A. Wise was forced to shut down due to the U.S. government's ban on factories producing non-essential items. Among the nearly 300 item list was potato chips. Herman believed potato chips should be classified as essential since they were resistant to spoilage and didn't require refrigeration or cooking, making them a readily available source of energy if there was a bombing or blackout during the war. Determined to convince Congress, Herman reached out to food industry lobbyists to plead his case. Several months later, he finally received news that potato chips would be reclassified as an essential item, saving not only LAIs but the entire potato chip industry. By the time the war ended, LAYs became the second largest food company in the U.S., right behind Frito. Frito held the number one spot due to its founder, Charles Doolin, who invented a machine with a hammer to mass-produce corn chips and then differentiated his flavor from competitors by growing his own special corn. Later, Frito experienced even more success when it used leftover powdered cheese from the war to make tasty puffed corn chips called Cheetos. For years, Frito and L.A.'s had been growing their markets at a distance, one in the east and one in the west. Eventually, their paths collided when Herman discovered that Charles wanted to open a Frito factory in L.A.'s territory. Rather than trying to bar him, Herman invited Charles to meet and suggested they find a way to work together. Charles agreed, and the two drew up an agreement. Under the terms, L.A. Wise was granted the rights to become an exclusive manufacturer and distributor of Frito products.